Hi everyone. Welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about DevOps lifecycle and also the DevSecOps. So before we going to start the Dev, DevOps cycle, uh, we have to quickly recap evaluation of modern applications. So what is the evaluation of modern application and what is the DevOps cycle and its phases or stages? And what is the DevOps cycle in real world scenario? I will give a few examples. And what is the tools we are using under the DevOps cycle? And what is the DevOps cycle in VRealize automation or the latest version, ARIA automation? And finally, we can conclude with what is DevSecOps and its a cycle and phases. Once we're familiar with the DevOps cycle, it's just some add on with the security only, that is the DevSecOps. Okay, so let's start with the first point. So evaluation of modern applications, we are already familiar. We discussed in our previous session, but uh, today we are focusing on the DevOps portion. And even as we are aware, um, most of the customer conversation these days, all are asking for a latest cloud-based models. And a few questions we are getting from the customers, mainly on the containerization platform. And um, it's related to microservices architecture and also specifically to the software development practice, we are using a DevOps model, okay? And what is the DevOps cycle and its phases or stages? Let's say the DevOps cycle is a continuous loop broken into the various stages. If you see here, we have a development team have a, some stages and operation team also have a, some stages. So minimally development team have a four stages and operation team also have a four stages. So this portion we can discuss. So the first one, normally any project, it start with the initial plan. So plan is nothing but it is the initial phase of the project. And in this phase, the actual planning is done here. Okay, suppose I want to deploy a Tanju Kubernetes cluster. But before deploying the Tanju Kubernetes cluster, we should prepare the plan. So our plan can be either we can deploy the Tanju on vSphere level or we can deploy the Tanju on a VCF level, VMware Cloud Foundation level. But on which environment we are planning to deploy the Tanju, we should decide in the initial plan. Okay, that is one example. And another scenario, code. So how we are going to design our Tanju environment? Tanju is nothing but it's an enterprise grade Kubernetes platform. So the code can be as designed based on our initial plan design. And in the planning phase, application coding is done in this phase. So application coding can be, we can prepare here. Suppose uh, normally for the plan is like, a, I'm taking the example of vSphere with Tanju. Okay, so vSphere with the Tanju, how we can do is initially we can configure vSphere with the Tanju on vSphere environment. And later on, if you want to configure the Tanju Kubernetes clusters in short form TKC. So to deploy the TKC environment, we can use any of the automation platform. So that automation you can deploy using a infrastructure as a code or like ML files we can use to deploy our code. Within our ML file, we can provision our TKC cluster plans. So Tanju Kubernetes cluster plans, we can prepare a minimally two plans, one plan for your development and one plan for your production. So development means minimally we require a two control plane VM and two worker load, workload VMs, worker node VMs. Some or else some customers, they may recommend development is only one control plane VM and one worker node VM. And for production, minimally we need three master node or three control plane node and three worker nodes. So this can be, we can modify in our code itself. ML, ML code infrastructure as a code file, we have to modify the based on our requirement. So as I mentioned, for development, we, we can change the sizing and production, we can increase the sizing, minimally three and maximum you can put either five worker nodes or 10 worker nodes depends on our customer requirement. That is the example. And when it comes to the build environment, so whatever we prepared in our code, here is the developed code is transferred to build. So based on our build only, let's say our code, I already mentioned development environment, minimally one worker node, or two worker nodes or suppose for production minimally three worker nodes so those three worker node three master nodes will be provisioned here build level and once the build is completed we have to do a test 
whether the build were tested in this phase, all are provisioned successfully or not. Once this test is success, what we can do is we can release it to the operations team. So release means if the test is succeeds, it would be sent to the release space. And another stage is deploy stage. So under deploy stage, these releases were deployed for the production team. That means our Tanju Kubernetes cluster is released to our end users, end user or stakeholders. So then they will start maintaining their operations. The operations team takes the deployed code, whatever the operation we deployed based on the deployment, they will take care of all the day to operations. And finally, to stable or to monitor our environment, the monitor stage. So finally, the operations team monitors the applications, all the tangible Kubernetes container based application they can monitor. So the same use case, how I explained with the vSphere with Tanju, these stages are common for all the software developments. Even if you take the application of Java or you can take the Spring, any of the application, the deployment stage will follow all these stages. All these are eight stages. So the first to four stages belongs to develop, developer team and the remaining four stages releases to, um, belongs to the operations team. Okay. Now, the another key point for this DevOps cycle at these stages is the loop begins again suppose once we already the plan is finalized code build test and release it to the operation team operation team also deployed and they are operating day to operations and monitoring in case during the monitoring if you faced any issue we need to give the feedback to the developer team so again based on the feedback they will prepare another plan and they will do some modifications in our code and after modification of code, we can change the version and again deploy and that deploy also needs to be tested before releasing to the production. So once released to the production, we can take care of the deploy and the day two operations and monitor. So this is like a completely continuous repeated cycle. So that is the reason the symbol is showing as a infinity. Infinity means it's never ends. So that point I highlighted here. The loop begins again with the plan stage and serving from the operate and monitor stage to initiate the next cycle again it will initiate the next cycle and there should be no start or end to the loop and it's one of the long continuous process of integration so integration between de development team and operation team and delivery development and feedback so in short form devops is nothing but a continuous feedback integration and delivery okay these are all main key pillars of devops Okay, now these are the main key principles also. We can say principles also. Now I'm going to talk about some real world example tools with reference to the our DevOps stages. So the point is, what is the DevOps cycle in real world examples? Let's say, based on our previous discussion, say so in our plan stage, and then we are going to a code stage is the second stage. Within that second stage, we need to choose the source code. You can choose any of the code. Uh, example is AML infrastructure as a code, and we can also maintain the version control. If you prepare an initial one, we maintain version 1.0 and another later versions, version 2, version 3, and so on. And the build stage, we have a deployment and automation tools. And the test stage, we can use quality control. And while releasing also, we have a mainly three stages, continuous integration, continuous delivery, or continuous development. Okay, this uh, importance of CI, CD, I will cover in the later session. And deploy means within our deploy, based on our infrastructure as a code, we can deploy it here. Provisioning will start. And then we can do the configuration management. And you can configure either a virtual machine or you can configure a containers. And monitoring stage we can use the any of the visualization tool monitoring tools and also the log monitoring tools and similarly we can also use network monitoring tools but what are all the tools we are using there are plenty of tools i am just showing you few examples let's say if you match with the code level the planning is common normally the based on our software application we can prepare the based on the business application we can prepare the plan and the code level i am giving you three examples here we can use either git and Zira are confluence. Any of the code we can use. And build stage, we can use the tools Marvin or SPT. So minimally, we should learn at least one tool to understand the DevOps full cycle. And the test level, we can use SC and JUnit. And if you want to release it to the operations team, we have to use know that the release tools that is Jenkins, 
courtship and some of the tools it may also have a additional roles some tools may be dedicated only for the specific stage okay and the deploy stage you can deploy this code either it can deploy on a data center or any of the specific operating system or you can deploy on a docker container engine or you can deploy on a public cloud like aws and then you if you want to operate it we need uh, some tools so like configuration management we can use chef or if you want to do any of the other operations we can use the red hat ansible and we can also use K kubernetes platform for the container orchestration and cluster management and when it comes to the monitoring stage, we have a tools like Nagio, Splunk, and Datadog. Not only limited to these tools, we can also use Dynatrace or any of the other third-party tools, SolarWinds. Even if you compare with the VMware, we can use VRealize Operations Manager, or we can use a network monitoring. We can use VRealize Network Insight. Okay, and latest one is Aria Insight for Network. Okay, and these all the examples of real world tools so minimally if you are deep diving to the devops cycle we should learn minimally one tool for each stage okay now similarly i'm going to compare with you we realize automation now so what is a devops cycle in we realize automation or aria automation so within the aria automation here also we have a some relevant tools like during the initial stage we are preparing a generate a ml code within our cloud template or we say blueprint blueprint is the previous technology latest technology is cloud tem cloud cloud template okay and once we prepare the ml code then we are committing the version control version will be minimally starts with version 1.0 and later on 2.0 and so on and we can build it to a deploy the blueprint and we can test it whatever the code we prepared that code has to be verified tested then only we can release it to the operation team based on the code specifications it will deploy so deploy can be published to the blueprint version once we publish it to the service broker we can submit the request from the we realize service broker tab or aria automation service broker tab and later on if you want to operate, we can use some operations tools like we realize operations or ARIA operations tool. And if you need any additional resources in future, we can also plan for a horizontal scaling or vertical scaling. And horizontal and vertical scaling also, I will explain separately in the later session. And monitoring stage, we can also use for log monitoring, we realize log insight, and network monitoring, we realize network insight. But remember, we realize name is changed recently to ARIA. So maybe in future, we are calling as a ARIA network insight or ARIA log insight. Okay, now another point is what is DevSecOps and its cycle and phases? Once we are familiar with the DevOps cycle, it's easy to understand the sec DevSecOps. So let's see if you see that this diagram, the same as DevOps, but security is implemented in every stage. So every stage, the security is covered. That is nothing but a development security operations. So that in uh, in other words, DevSecOps is short for development, security, and operations, and it automates the integration of security at every phase or stage of the software deployment lifecycle from initial design through integration, testing, deployment, and software delivery. Okay, and same like our DevOps cycle, real world scenarios, even security level also, there are few tools like uh, we can use threat model policies static analysis code review that means application code scanning tools we can use before moving to the build stage and even in the test phase we can do the penetration testing and we need to do the compliance validation then only we can release it to the operations team that means instead of our regular validation first when you comes to the devsecops we need to add uh, some extra security for each stage Okay, and deployment level also we can do the auditing, log auditing, and in the operation stage, instead of normal monitoring and normal operation day to operation, we also do some security operations like a threat intelligence and detecting if you find any any of the vulnerabilities, immediately detect the vulnerability and we have to remediate also. And in case of any issues happen, we can recover also and we can use the monitor. So security can be implemented in every stage. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view, like, share, and subscribe to Gnan Cloud Garage. And if you're already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.